All right, all right, all right. Happy Thursday, everybody, and welcome to Kayak Fishing Weekly, the brand new show on the Serious Angler Podcast Network. Folks that might know me from Serious Angler, my name is Bailey Eigbrett, and I'll be one of your hosts for Kayak Fishing Weekly, but I am joined by my counterpart here, and uh, I'll let him introduce himself. Hey, everybody. My name is Justin Largen. Uh, I live in Roanoke, Virginia currently. I'm a uh, kayak angler primarily. Um, I, I think I consider myself a bass fisherman probably at the core. And then uh, kayak fishing is just kind of my my favorite way to do it. So I, I fish a lot of the national trails, uh, fish some local stuff, just kind of a fishing junkie that loves doing it out of a kayak. Exactly. I mean, at the end of the day, we're all anglers, but our means of doing so is is out of the kayak. And that's what we love to do. And for many reasons, which we're going to get into today. But oh, yeah. uh, for folks listening, this might be the first time they've ever heard of us, which chances are they are. Uh, which one? You. <laughs> I don't know about that. I feel bad if they do. Uh, but I think it's important is, is one, thank you guys for listening to episode one of Kayak Fishing Weekly. But uh, Justin and I need to introduce ourselves as anglers because there's a reason why Justin and I are paired together here. Um, one, I guess, Justin, go through how you got into kayak fishing in the first place and then yourself as an angler, who you are when you're fishing from the kayak. Sure. I'll, uh, I'll try and keep it, keep it kind of short. Uh, but I, I kind of started out bank fishing like, like most people and, you know, all the way up through college, I got a, a pond prowler, a little plastic John boat from Bass Pro Shops. Uh, first boat I ever got, you know, was right out of school and I, I had some money and, and I enjoyed fishing that out, out of it. Uh, but I started seeing these videos on YouTube, uh, stuff that Chad Hoover was putting out and then other stuff that Jeff Little was putting out. Those were the, the first ones I was kind of exposed to and it looked fun. It looked simpler than what I was doing, uh, with that plastic John boat. I, I mean, it, it was fairly heavy and I was sliding that thing on top of the Jeep. I was, you know, hauling around a couple of big lead acid batteries and a big trolling sure. motor and having to hook all that stuff up and then taking as much tackle as I could cram into that thing. Well, the, the kayak, it, it just looks simpler. Uh, having a lighter boat, you know, where you could just grab a couple rods, uh, you know, box of baits. You didn't need a whole lot. And I saw it at the time I was living in Northern Virginia. I was working in D.C. And it was a way for me to just get a couple hours of fishing in on the way to work or on the way home from work. And uh, it just... You know, I got my first one and just fell in love with it. I think it was a year later I was moving, you know, from one apartment to the the next and realized that the Pond Prowler, from the time that I got my first uh, kayak, uh, a Wilderness Systems Commander, that, that Pond Prowler sat there for a year. It had not been touched. It had not gotten in the water <laughs> since I got the kayak. I think that's when I realized I was, I was a kayak guy and, you know, sold the Pond Prowler and I haven't looked back. So when you're in the kayak now, because this is coming full circle for folks where Justin and I are polar opposites when it comes to, to fishing anyway, where, where is home for you when you're fishing from the kayak? I, I like being up shallow in the dirt, you know, close to the bank, looking at stuff, visible targets. I like having something to throw at. I, I get, when I get out away from the bank and offshore, uh, you know, I start to get uncomfortable. It's it's away from my comfort zone, but I, like think think like a, a poor man's Drew Gregory for those of you that follow <laughs> the team. It's like I I like to get into kind of the places that that Drew does, but I like I don't dislike current. I I like tidal stuff, um, yeah, and right. I like little ponds. I mean, I've I, I honestly I don't think I think that I I started fishing big bodies of water really when I started tournament fishing. Um, I loved getting into these little 50 acre, 20 acre, 10 acre, 200 acre lakes, stuff that was electric only or no motors at all, where mm -hmm. it was hard to get to. And I could just throw the kayak on my shoulder and walk down. I love getting into those places because the fish are stupid. Well, not stupid, but stupider. Oh, we can see that. I mean, they, let's be honest, they are. Yeah, I mean, it's they, they haven't been beat over the head. They haven't seen every color of every lure, you know, nonstop. And I know you're in New York. I know the, the lakes get a ton of pressure there. Where I was at the time, you know, Northern Virginia was very similar. The Potomac just gets pounded nonstop. So I loved getting into places that, you know, where I wouldn't see anybody else all day. 
Yeah, and I will say, when, when you say you're a target fisherman, I will agree in that I'm that. But I am that when it comes to subsurface. Like, I like to see, you know, fish, grass lines, rock piles, very target-specific stuff. It's hard for me to fish a flat and just fan cast for hours. I can't. It's hard for my brain to do that. Where gotcha. on the opposite side, though, I like to be as far away from the bank as I can, which is a very interesting concept for out of a kayak because I live here in Buffalo, New York. So I'm in the home of one of the small mouth meccas of the world. And I take that sucker a couple miles out and I fish offshore for, for big world class small mouth. I do it on Ontario. We have some amazing finger lakes that have been recently setting records for small mouth well, state records, I should say anyway. Uh, and some of those lakes I call home. Uh, people that know me, they know the Finger Lakes is what I grew up on, where I like to go find the rock pile in the middle of the abyss, in the middle of the lake that uh, I spent time on electronics finding. I, there's, I, I'll, I'll let people in on when COVID happened. I lost my job out of high school or out of college from it and spent two weeks graphing our lakes. All I had was a little Lawrence, uh, Lawrence 9 HDS. And I swear, I swear it was harder than you could believe to not cast. There were five days straight where I tell you, Justin, I didn't have a motor or nothing. This was all pedals. This was back when I was in my collegiate athlete prime fitness here. <laughs> I spent five days for eight hours each simply pedaling and graphing some of these lakes. And the amount of stuff I found has still to this day been helping me. And it's always produced fish. And that, for whatever reason, has been like, that's been my comfort. It's burned me sometimes where there's times I go down to a lake I've never been to and I'm always trying to look for that needle in a haystack and that really hurts me. But there's something about it when it's like when you find that one spot that nobody in the else in the field knows about, it's magic, man. It almost oh, yeah. feels like when you're there fishing it that it's like, you're like, wow, this is kind of easy. But the, the hard part is actually just is simply finding it, putting in the work and the time, not casting. But something about that, man, I love being offshore with, you know, grass lines, like all that stuff doesn't, grass doesn't scare me. And I, I don't get me wrong. I love getting up shallow, punchy and getting, you know, nasty with the rest of them. But like you said, it's got to be target rich. If it's a flat, I can't do it. I'm, I'm pretty sure you won a tournament that way. Pretty big tournament, if, if memory serves. So oh, what, I'll put it in, in perspective world. for you. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> Justin, so Justin and I, folks, we are tournament anglers, but we are anglers first what if you can take the tournament out of us we're still going to be out there just as much doing the same things we're already doing because we oh, love yeah. the sport and we love bass we love fish uh, we, salt water nothing like you could put us anywhere we just want to go fish and but i'll say when it comes to the tournament stuff it's it's actually pretty funny that last season was the best season i've ever had tournament wise um on the local side i won three local events one angler of the year and did so with uh, I think there's one tournament out of the seven or so that I fished that I did not have a graph with me. The other ones I was utilizing my graphs in some capacity on the Hobie series. I finished. Well, I, was, I think I was like seventh or eighth angler of the year going into TOC before I absolutely sucked at TOC. Uh, and that cool. dropped heavily down. Um, it's tough for single, a lot of it was, it was some people, it was, it was pretty easy. There's some dang hammers that we have that we're excited to bring on the show and, and learn from. But it was funny though, on the Hobie series, all those tournaments, uh, top 20 at Chickamauga at Suski. Um, and then obviously you fall won that one and quite literally had no graphs on my kayak for every single one of those. <laughs> So it's like, it's weird, man. I don't know what it is, but we're going to talk about that. But this is why we think this is going to be great moving forward for Kayak Fishing Weekly in that Justin and I, our minds work completely the opposite when it comes to fishing and where we like to be. So we're going to be coming at you. It's completely two different perspectives on topics, trends, anything when it comes to this conversation. So we think that's going to be really fun for you guys. And, and with that, man, we're here for one thing, and that's the love of kayak fishing. So... We thought, what better than to start first episode off, you guys getting to learn more about us and why we love kayak fishing. So we're going to give our top three to you guys. We'll go back and forth here. And uh, I'll, get, I'll give it to our host here, Mr. Justin Largen, to uh, kick us off the first thing that you have on your list that you love about kayak fishing. Sure. So mine, I, I don't know. I'm probably dating myself. I don't know if anybody remembers or if they still teach like the three R's, reading, writing, and arithmetic in school. But I, I picked 
I picked all all uh, kind of on that theme, all words that start with P. So I'll start with portability <laughs> and uh, portability. Like it's kind of a broad thing, I guess. But but for me, you know, a kayak is more portable than than what I had before. It's more portable than a, a bass boat. You can throw it in the bed of a truck. You can throw it on top of a car. Um, you can can take it then and access a lot of places with it and just places that you can't get with, with anything else. Uh, it's lighter weight. It's just, it's, it's portable. And then the storage is another thing that was big for me. Uh, cause living in Northern Virginia, I was in, you know, I was always going from one apartment to the next apartment and you, you know, I didn't have a ton of space. You know, there was no place to put a bass boat. You know, you, you might have like one reserve space for your vehicle, but the kayak, I mean, you could, you can stick it up against the side of the house. If you had a garage, I mean, there's a lot of, a lot of things you can do. A lot of places you can put that to where you have the ability to get off the bank, get out there, explore. Um, it's just a, a really unique way to explore these different fisheries. I love that. And I think all of these folks we, is when Justin and I talked about this offline prior to the show, we we're like, we're probably going to have a lot of things similar. So we're going to have to go over these before we do this show so that we're not overlapping and giving you guys repetitive stuff. Um, but yeah, and I, so I'll transition off that from the storage and say, the first thing I love about it is how DIY do it yourself kayak fishing is in regards to whatever I see is out there in the space. You can figure out a way to put it on a kayak. And there's some people that are way, 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 way better. I mean, thank God I have a local dealer that helps me rig my kayak because I'd probably be sinking if I tried to rig my kayak every single time. Uh, but I get ideas and he helps bring those ideas way. to life. <laughs> yeah. But there's people out there, man, that are so, so good at taking an idea, especially kayak wise and putting it into effect where like boats and stuff, it's very, very hard to do so. Um, and a lot of times if you, if you try to, you'll void a warranty or something along those lines where the kayak, you just beat the crap out of it, you know? Um, but yeah, I mean, I love to see what setups that I could make with my kayak. I run a pretty big one. I run a Hobie pro angler 14 with that. There's a lot of room to do a lot of things. And sometimes I'm one of those people, Justin, you know, me where you got a lot of toys on there. It's a lot of toys, toys but I, it's so hard for me to not bring a lot of stuff where there's, there's days Fun fishing wise, I go out and force myself. You are only bringing two rods today. You're not bringing a tackle crate. You are going out and doing two things and you're stuck to it. You're not bringing 16 rods because there's times, dude, I get excited or I think about a tournament and I'm prepping for it or simply just a bite that might be really good. And I'm like, this could work. This could work. This could work. Oh, I might need to take, take this rod to make five casts with this. And next thing you know, I got 12 rods sitting in the kayak and I got no room to move. So it's like, that this is where my mind's at. So prepare yourself, people, because my, my I'm I am OCD and as ADHD as it gets. I'm like that with lures. Like the, <laughs> I can go skimp on some of the other accessories, but where I used to get in trouble was I would try to take so much stuff, like so bags and bags and bags of soft plastics. It'd just be a giant mess, baits thrown everywhere, and I've gotten better at it. But that's that's my struggle. And it, you know, like you were saying, you got to have, I want to have the ability to throw a bunch of different techniques and try different things. And it, it saves time having more rods, but at least for me, I've got to find a balance. Like a, it's like a constant battle of, you know, how much do I absolutely have to have before I have too many and everything starts to get in the way and get cluttered. That That's the, that's the thing, right? I had somebody ask me the other day was, you know, how many rods can you fit on your kayak? And I'm like, well, there's how many can I fit, and then there's how many I can bring and efficiently move around. You know what I mean? Because those are yep. two different things. Or it's out of just out of sheer curiosity. I have, I have a lot of rod setups, guys. I'm a tackle hoarder. You'll, you'll learn that about me, and I'm sure Justin's the same way. But I got yep. around 30 different rod and wheel combos, and I fit them all in the kayak. There's a way to do it. Is it logical or smart? Heck no. Not smart to do. But... It, it, there's there's a lot you can do if you if you think outside the box. I've seen some pretty gnarly setups for guys to be able to have extra stuff and not have it be in the way. Uh, and that's one of the things we kind of want to break down with this too. Some we want to highlight some of these cool setups that we're seeing out there, things that people do 
that's outside the box. That's, you know, that's something that's not the norm or something that might be new. When you talk about trends, that kind of falls, falls into that. But Justin, what's your second one? Second one, uh, I picked a kind of a simple one, price. You know, you can get into kayak fishing very cheaply. Bass boats, shoot, I remember when I was, and again, I'm dating myself, when I was first out of school, you know, I think you could still get a boat for thirty or 40000 a, a pretty high-end bass boat that you could go compete in major tournaments with. Um, you know, I couldn't afford that. But I could afford, you know, that that pond prowler that I bought, I think I paid 500 bucks for. And the kayak, um, you can get a very good, stable kayak that you can go out there and compete. You know, you can be comfortable in it. You can compete in tournaments. You can pretty much do whatever you want with it for a thousand bucks. And I, I actually bought a river kayak, a, a Crescent Ultralight this summer, um, something to take in these little creeks and backwaters. I needed a new throw and go. And that thing brand new was 700 bucks. So it's something that is, a, it, it, it's accessible to, to most people, you know, people like me that, you know, can't drop now a hundred thousand dollars on a bass boat, Yeah, you know, you can find a way to, to spend 700 bucks and, and get a small kayak or, you know, spend a little more and get something that's bigger and more stable, more storage. It's just, a, it's, it's much more accessible to most people. Yeah. And I'll say with kayak fishing as a sport, there are certainly tournaments and locations where having some of the fancy gadgets like a technology, a fish finder, a power pole, a motor can be an advantage or it's just a, it'll excel well at that time at that location. But one thing I'll tell you, and there's a lot of people that fall in this bucket, not just me. I'm just using it as an example because I lived it. So when I won that 10 grand at Lake Eufaula, I could have done that out of a simple $200 paddle kayak. Was I more comfortable in a Hobie pro angler? Yes. Was it efficient with the 360 pedals? Yes. But could I have done it out of a paddle kayak? 100%. Because I literally I, was maybe a mile from the ramp, and I used one rod the entire event. I threw a spinnerbait the entire time. All you needed was that, a net, maybe. I probably could have boat flipped all the fish, maybe not that six-and-a-half-pounder, but <laughs> the, and then uh, your board to measure. That's all you needed. That's it. There's so I can't count the number of tournaments that I've been to all over the country where at least one guy, maybe they don't win it, but there's at least one guy that cracks the top 10 with a super simple setup, not even a pedal drive, just a paddle. And like you were saying, some gear, just like you did at Ufala. Um, you know, it's, I think that's one of the cool things about the tournament fishing too, is you can make it, you know, super high tech and bring lots of gadgets and, and complicated. And there's definitely times where that's, there's an advantage to having all those tools, like you said, but you can make it super simple and take one rod. I, I don't know how many times a guy, takes a spin rod and a Senko and just goes and skips it around the bank and nuts <laughs> and kicks my butt. <laughs> I, I'm sure as, as the KFW, the kayak fishing weekly community grows, uh, they're going to learn to hate me because I hate the wacky rig. I throw it. Don't get me wrong. It just drives me nuts, man. <laughs> Cause there's people that are so good with it. Like there are a lot of John Cox's for people that follow the boat world where John Cox only throws a wacky rig and kicks people's butt and rakes money where it's gosh, it works everywhere every time of year for just about every location. And uh, yeah, there's your first tip guys. The first thing to, if you potentially want to learn from us is when in doubt, wacky out, man, <laughs> always, always got to get the wacky um, missile yeah. 48. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Plug. Any worm just be wacky rig. It will probably get bit. <laughs> But uh, yeah, I'll say, so second one to keep this conversation rolling is I'm calling it bass immersion. And what I mean by that is the kayak is so, you, you don't have, in most cases, right? Some people have bow mounted trolling motors pending your setup. But if you have a pedal drive or you're paddling, you can get so immersed in your surroundings that you're able to one, not one, because it's not very loud, right? You don't have a trolling motor. You don't have different things that are, are making noise where the kayak, it's, I know you're going to get into this a little bit, so I don't want to overstep, but the 
fact that you can get up close and personal with fish where there's been so many times here in the North where I am literally feet from bass and they don't know I'm there or they might, and they just don't care because I'm not as of an intrusive of an object where I get to learn more about them. There's, there's so many times where I put, I like to put the rods down and especially on these bodies of water that are clear. And I just sit, and just watch, and just see how they behave with each other, how they behave with bluegill, how they interact or what decisions they might make. I mean, there's, there's been times, man, where it's like I watched one fish under a dock and I sat there for a good 20 minutes just because it, one, it was a big one. It was fun. I tried to catch her. She wouldn't eat. Uh, but either way, it, and there's this bluegill, 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 everything going by. And then for whatever reason, the biggest bluegill moving faster than all the other ones, that's the one she goes over and decides to eat where it's like some small things you can kind of learn. And it's like, I don't know. I'm just, I, I guess my, what I'm trying to say is like in a boat, that's I'm not saying you can't do it. It's a lot harder to do it. Whereas the kayak, you can really get up close and personal and not even just bass. I mean, nature. I mean, times like, see, I wish we could shoot from a moving object up here in New York on a body of water because the amount of deer I could kill from a kayak <laughs> is nuts. They have no idea I'm there. Mm-mm. Yeah. But yeah, that's what I'll say is my second one. Dude, that's, that's a good segue into mine. I, I, my third P, you know, we have portability and then price. Now I've got peace. And a, a couple aspects to that, but one of them is like what you were saying, just it it's it's quiet out there and that you can sneak up on stuff. I've gotten so many, I've had so many cool encounters with wildlife. I mean, sometimes when I'm not tournament fishing, I'll actually take a, a camera with me, like a nice, you know, wildlife photography, long lens, just in case I run into something and, and get some, some cool, like professional quality photos. But you see so much stuff. I, I spooked a bunch of deer on the Chesapeake. Um, shoot, I had a bass busting on bait fish around my kayak. I had one almost jump, a bass almost come into the kayak. I wasn't even fishing, like you're saying, rods down. Um, but it just, it's so quiet and stealthy. You blend in, you see all kinds of cool stuff that you don't see as often when you're in something that makes more noise like a boat. But also, like when I say peace, I'm thinking like peace of mind. Like any type of fishing is is relaxed and it's kind of a de-stressor. You can sort of forget about, you know, whatever else, you, your work stress and any other stresses of life. But something about being in the kayak and just sort of out there by yourself in a wild place, it just, it, it takes it to another level for me. It's just, it's very relaxing and I get lost and unplug and kind of reset. Yeah. I mean, it's, uh, I compare it to, to bow hunting for me where there's a lot of times bow hunting. It's, it's not about the, the chase or the, the actual taking game part. It's the, I'm sitting up in a tree stand. It's 45 degrees. Leaves are changing. It's quiet. Can't hear a dang thing. And it's like you forget everything going on around you. That's it's the most relaxing, releasing feeling that is like it soothes the soul. You know what I'm saying? It's it's pretty dang cool. Um, and usually you get these on lakes, like we're talking about, that have like the nine nine or or lower horsepower that doesn't have any docks, because you know usually you get that serenity until about seven a.m. when the first jet ski comes ripping down the lake, and then it kind of gets annoying. <laughs> but yeah. yeah. But yeah, no, I agree with that, man. I think that's one of the best parts, if not the best part about kayak fishing from that standpoint is getting into those bodies of water where it's just quiet. The, what is it? What is the quote? Something about how the, uh, something about silence speaks the loudest or something like that. I don't know. There's something a lot about that where it's like the things you can, I don't know. I'm trying to get philosophical here and I don't have the direct quote. So I, I know what you mean. Yeah. Yeah. So another, another precursor for this show is I, I get on a lot of tangents people. So I apologize ahead of time. It's just, again, my ADHD, you can blame it on that. But uh, my third, third and final one before we get into our last segment of the show, announce that to folks. As I'll say the kayak community is my, my third favorite part about kayak fishing. I'm going to brag a little bit here. I'm going to brag on my local chapter here in New York. We had, we had well over a hundred members signed up for our local trail this year uh, and averaged, I think it was a little over 50 anglers per event for New York, which is pretty awesome. And heck yeah. When I tell you there was no issues with anybody, it was everyone showing up to the ramp, having a good old time. Everyone's talking to each other. People willing to, you know, help each other get down to the water, help each other, this and that. 
Uh, people are always trying to lend a hand. Uh, and it's like, for me, there's been a, a, a smaller group of us that have just been around the trail for so long that it's like pulling up and just seeing your boys. It's only difference is pulling up and trying to take your, your buddy's money. That's it. That's the only really big difference. Uh, and you know, and it's like, you, it's friendly on the water, the camaraderie aspect, everyone's meeting for a drink at the bar for awards at the end of the day. Uh, I mean, we're getting out there and competing, like we're getting after it, but at the same time, like you're still there to help each other. You know, if that makes any sense. And there's, there's a small, uh, network of guys that are, that are just, they're there to compete against each other, but they're also there to help each other learn, which I respect the hell out of. And it's, it, I appreciate about it. Um, but, but something that was pretty cool was, and this is, well, I'm using this as an example. I know this is a universal thing. I know this happens a lot of different places, which you can't really say the same, say the same thing for some of these boat tournaments that are out there. I'm just going to lay that, lay that out there. I mean, there's guys that help each other. Don't get me wrong, but it's a lot more cutthroat uh, from that perspective. But there was a, there, our first tournament this past year, a charity tournament for NYKBF. We had all of a sudden this random gust of wind that was like almost up to like 60, 65 miles an hour. Uh, nine anglers flipped their kayaks and I had to bail. I, I tried to, I was, I like to stay in out in risky conditions way longer than I'm supposed to. Maybe that's just the, the Lake Erie, Lake Ontario in me that I just think I can handle it. Um, this I couldn't handle. It was like, I couldn't turn. Like I had the torpedo full throttle. I was pedaling and I was still getting pushed back. And I had to bail on the land. Thank, thank gosh. There's a lady there that let me stay on her property and, and leave that way. But the amount of guys that were all calling each other and driving around the lake to go help whoever needed to be. Cause like half the, the trail had to bail on a private property. So everyone's going up and picking each other up and like kayaks are like, doing basically musical chairs with trucks it was um but the, the act that people call in tournament director hey who needs to get picked up like i can go get whatever it, it just spoke pretty loud to me and i thought that was really cool yeah. and i'm glad to be a part of that trail and i know that a that happens a lot more than what i'm just speaking on than just one trail but that that right oh, yeah. there is what kayak fishing is all about and that's one thing we wanted to preach on this is a lot of media nowadays talks about the negative we're going to be talking about the positive i mean We'll talk about some some topics that need to be discussed, right? That we think deserve our point of view and deserve, deserve discussion. But we're here to spread positivity, man, because there's not enough of that. And that's a you turn on the news, and all you see nowadays is negative. We'll we'll be oh, your yeah. little taste of positive. We hope. And I wish I had a. I don't have any stories that are quite as dramatic as yours with the camaraderie, but <laughs> I've really noticed it the more I've been involved because I kind of did it. I got into the 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 competition and decided to just jump into the national level. So I didn't have a lot of buddies on the local scene or, and it, it took a little while, you know, at first I was kind of, you know, I didn't know anybody, but I, as I've gotten sort of welcomed into the community, I've, I've met so many people and it's like, you're saying it, it just, you go to the tournament, you know, you go to the registration, the, the, the pre-tournament meeting and you see all your, all your boys, everybody that, you know, um, it's just a lot of fun. And, I've, I've, I think you're spot on. I've never seen people help each other as much. I've never had people offer me like advice on how to catch fish um, or tell me where to go to catch fish. Like people that I'm competing against where you, you, you know, you don't have something figured out maybe and they do. And they're like, Hey man, just, if you go over here and, and try this, you'll catch some fish. Um, that yeah. doesn't happen. I don't think in the boat world, it, it's, it's really unique to, to kind of our little, our little niche or niche. Yeah. Have you say it? Yeah. No, I mean, it's, it's, there's something cool about that. I mean, you, you were talking, I know we're going to get into some stuff, but like when you're on a good bite, there, there was uh, the Ike charity tournament I was in and it's a charity tournament. Like there's no money on the line. You're just having fun. And dude, I was smashing them on a frog and it was like the same cast. And like, there's guys coming back there that didn't have any fish. I'm like, dude, get over here. Like this is, I can't be the only one to enjoy this. Cause they're all like three and a half, you know, they're 18 to I think I literally had all five fish for all 18 and three quarters at event. Something crazy. Like just that consistent size. And ended up one guy came by and he's like, uh, he's like, Oh, you're catching them. I'm like, Yeah, how about you? He goes, I don't have anything. And I'm like, Yeah, frog rod. He goes, No. I'm like, here, <laughs> take take the rod, man. <laughs> take the cast. And of course, the one time he catches one, it's like a 15. It's not, you know, that 18 size, but hey, but it's it was just fish. one of those cool things, man. Yeah, it was just cool. Um, 
that's what I love about it. But we're, we'll be sure to share out those cool stories. If you guys have any of those cool stories, things that happen like that, that you think should be shared, reach out to us at kayak fishing weekly on Instagram or in the comments down here, uh, email us at the serious angler at gmail.com. We'll have all that contact information down in the show notes for YouTube and MP3, or even reach out to Justin or I on our personal social media. We'd love to hear them spread awareness about it. Like, talk about it on the show get you on to talk about it that'd be really cool so uh if you guys see those pass them along our direction but uh justin i think it calls for our se- our, our last segment of the day yeah i think i think we're there i think we're there do, do you I'm want excited. to uh you came up with the name so i feel like i gotta let you say it because because i like it. it it's got a good got a good ring to it I, I like it. Who knows? It, it might change as it goes on. There's somebody might come out with something cooler, but I think for now we, we like this. So what we want to do is obviously we're going to be having a bunch of top tier anglers on, or like we said earlier, anglers from a certain region that just excel in a certain style of fishing that we can think we can be a great teacher. We're going to have a lot of those people on and those people are going to get a bunch of attention and are already getting a bunch of attention through other shows as well as their own media where we want to take this second to I would still still call out the winners, but call out the underdogs, the unsung heroes of kayak fishing. We're calling them the kayak fishing kings and queens of the week. This is going to be a, a sport center top 10 esque style segment for you guys. Uh, and we're, we're going to keep working on improving this thing, but it's something we're excited about. We're going to try to find three people or three groups, however it may be each week. Whether it's social media, it's YouTube, it's tournament fishing, or something we see that we just think is pretty, pretty dang cool and deserves some recognition. So, kayak fishing kings of the week, and we're gonna we're gonna get some music started here too. Uh, I'm gonna lead you off. I know we just said the heroes, but the first kayak fishing king, Justin, lead us yeah, off. I, I'm gonna I'm gonna go a little bit different direction. Um, because I feel like it would just be wrong to not have the kayak fishing goat, Russ Snyder's, as the kayak king of the week, our first one. Um, and specifically, you know, the dude's won everything. I know when I first started watching the, you know, the, the videos and, and following kayak fishing and seeing the tournaments, you know, Russ was the guy to beat. I saw his name all the time. I feel like uh, he was the one that I was chasing when I started, and I'm still chasing him. But uh, for this this one specifically, I want to highlight him winning the KBF, the 10 tournament, a couple of weeks ago. Um, and, and kind of a fun story from the water. I ran into him uh, mid-morning. It was a, a lake we, you know, none of us had practice for, none of the guys that qualified. Um, it was just we showed up, we, we went fishing. And Russ and I were kind of in the same place about 9, maybe, maybe 10 o'clock in the morning. You know, Casey Reed. Uh, Mike Elsie, they had smashed him in the morning, put up big limits. Russ and I had three fish, uh, very similar weight. He was a little bit ahead of me. Uh, and then I managed, you know, to fill out my limit the rest of the day and sat, you know, way down in the standings. And Russ, uh, Russ did what Russ does. Uh, from the time that I saw him at whatever it was, 9 30, 10 o'clock, he figured out that the, the bite changed. He went out offshore and just absolutely started crushing fish climbing that leaderboard and uh walked out of there with 10 grand um and, and like it hit home to me because i was like i saw him i know what he had at that time um so it's kind of you know it, it's it's humbling on the one hand but it's also hey man you know it, it, you're never out of it it's like we were in the yeah. same place i made you know the wrong decision he made the right decisions and you know, look what happened. So, yeah. First king of the week, Russ Snyder. First king of kayak fishing weekly ever. Rightfully so. He can definitely mark as a king. That's for dang sure. Well, I'm going to round it out. Like we we're talking about, is we're trying to get some unsung heroes on here. And I'm sure he gets some praise down in Florida. Um, he's one that I actually met over social media a little bit last year. Uh, eventually would love to have as a guest on the show. That's Chris Mitchell. Chris Mitchell of uh, Florida Kayak Fishing. He posted a video. I follow him on YouTube that uh, he won 
this kayak tournament, 94 and a half inches, but watch this video and we'll show you guys exactly what we mean. Starts the day off. Everything changed on me. He can't find his fish. I can but after persevering, that. yeah, persevering a little bit, trust his gut, looks into one and watches oh here. Watch this closely as he gets up to the net. Come here, Betty. Oh my God. How many times have you ever had, I mean, that look at his face says it all. <laughs> How many times have you had a fish completely just throw your hook, whatever bait you're using right at the net? And it can go both ways. Either you lose it or it gets in the net and you're like, oh, thank God for the net. It happens a lot. At least to me. Oh, yeah. And it usually doesn't go in the net. <laughs> it's such a different feeling depending on how it uh, how it turns out, too. Yes. It's either <laughs> consists of spinning out for the rest of the day, which is usually me when I lose it, or you're like, wow, that was clutch. And it's like, I should, put, I should probably check my hook. <laughs> oh, but yeah. Uh, yeah. Chris Mitchell, man, uh, will be our, our second kayak fishing king of the week. And round us out with number three, Jesse. All right, our, our third king of the week. I'm going to give it to, um, I hope I'm pronouncing his name right, Zach Bunner, uh, Delaware angler. I actually met him uh, this past weekend. Uh, we were fishing the Mid-Atlantic Kayak Bass Fishing Series, the Tournament of Champions. And Zach had an absolutely killer end to the season. Um, September 9th, we fished Lake Nakamixon. He won that tournament. A month later, October 14th, you know, the, the final regular season event of the year on a couple of, uh, tidal, uh, rivers in Delaware. And he won that event. He comes into the, the tournament of champions on the Chesapeake Bay and a very tough bite. It was, uh, it was stingy. It was, it was very stingy. Uh, I was fortunate to catch some fish, um, Zach finishes third and clinches the anger of the year. Um, beat me and a bunch of other guys. So hats off to Zach Bunner. Um, heck of a performance the, this this last month of the season and specifically at the, the TOC for MAKBF. Talk about a closer, man. Oh, yeah. And I, I was starting to think that I had a shot. You know, going in, I was I was kind of not where I wanted to be in the standings, but I had a good tournament. And I started to think, hey, maybe maybe I did enough. Nope. Zach. Uh, <laughs> Zach oh, didn't it. you win that event? I did. I did. I was I was fortunate. Uh, so very fortunate. Get out of here. Uh, I was, uh, it, it was it was stingy. Um, it looked like it, it mean, looked like it, quite the drop off. Oh, yeah, it, it was tough. Um, I've done a lot of title fishing and it just, you know, I was fortunate. And, and I don't want to go too far into the, the rabbit hole, but the tidal fishing, it you can sit in an area and stay in that. You, you can have everything right, right area, right bait, right retrieve. And just if the tide's a little bit off, the timing is off, it, it you catch nothing. Um, so it's just, there, there's some luck involved. There's skill, but there's also, you know, I know when it, when I'm, when I've, I've been blessed and, and, <laughs> and when I earned it. So it, but yeah, uh, I'd say you dang, you dang earned it. it. Yes, sir. Well, congrats to Zach. Those are our three kayak fishing kings of the week. That's a segment coming to you guys every single week is the kayak fishing kings and queens. We're going to be recognizing the young sung heroes of kayak fishing and uh, making sure they get more recognition. We're doing this more to, to praise the people in this sport because there's a lot of people that deserve a lot of recognition and uh, we're, we're giving recognition where it's due. So uh, we're going to have a lot of fun with that coming forth here on the show. But, uh, Justin, episode one, we've gotten through it. We're here. This is going to be a lot of fun. Looking forward to the amazing guest lineup that we have here, ready to go and ready to rock for the next couple of weeks because, uh, I mean, this next week is the Hobie Tournament of Champions. The Hobie BOS Tournament of Champions. So the TOC, the one that everybody looks forward to, the – Pretty much the biggest event, tournament-wise, from all of kayak fishing, bass fishing. I think it's maybe. got the biggest biggest payout this year. It's um, I want to say it carries a lot of weight. Thirty k accolade. Oh yeah, it's a three day tournament. It's you don't win that by accident. It's uh, it's one of those lifetime achievement things that I know uh, 
I know I want that bad. I, I'm sure you do. It's uh, that that's one of the big ones. That's right. And so, good luck to everybody that's fishing it. We got. I'll give a I'll give a shout out to uh, one of New York's own Brandon Berlinski. He got in there and uh, qualified through AOI points. Shout out to him. I'll be keeping along. I'm very yeah. jealous of everyone because I I know some people don't like it, but I love Lake Chickamauga. I really wish it was in that event, but uh, that's what happens when you don't catch fish, at least some big enough fish. But we'll we'll get in that into a later date. Uh, of course, Justin, any any closing remarks on episode one of Kayak Fishing Weekly? Shoot, man, I had fun. I'm uh, I'm hoping it's this fun every week. I can't wait to to pick the brains of some of our guests. It's uh. It's been a blast. Heck yeah, man. I'll second that. Looking forward to what's coming. We got some big guests lined up for you guys, so make sure you guys stay tuned. And uh, if you're listening to audio, we ask you a favor, these next coming shows, please subscribe, If whether you're on uh, Spotify or you're on Apple Podcasts. Give us a rating and review because that really help will help boost the show in regards to the amount of people we can see because how these platforms work is the more ratings and review, the more the show or the, the platform will show these episodes so please uh, help us out if you guys can uh, and if you're on youtube please like and subscribe to the serious angler network and check out the other shows that we have on our youtube channel from serious angler bits from the bass boat uh, and other shows that are on the network but uh every important information that we'll have from shows whether it's links out to something or you know to subscribe to somebody else uh, that we're talking about in that show or a guest we're always going to have either in the youtube or the mp3 notes so you guys can make sure to uh, make sure you're not missing anything. But uh, folks, appreciate everybody for uh, joining us here on episode one. It's been a crash course. If you guys only knew how many tries it took us to get this one, because uh, your boy, you think you'd realize after doing podcasting this long that I remember to click record, but I didn't the first <laughs> time. But we Don't got tell through it nonetheless. <laughs> oh, I, I like to. I just put myself on the chopping block, man. You got to. You got to. Uh, but folks, appreciate you all, and we'll see you next week for the next episode of Kayak Fishing Weekly. Peace.